Welcome to section 2 about advanced NestJS techniques. Let's talk about pipes and guards. Pipes are classes annotated with the injectable decorator and implementing the pipe transform interface. Pipes are used for transformation, that is, to transform route handler input data to the desired output, or for validation, that is, to evaluate the route handler input data and if valid, pass it through unchanged or through an exception. Here's a representation of pipes in the request lifecycle. You can see that pipes are in the execution zone. That is that they will intercept the value pass to the route handler. You can get more information on pipes by going to this link. Now let's update our crypto API. Inside Visual Studio Code, go to the crypto API controller. We will implement a validation pipe for the find one route handler. In order to tie a pipe to a specific route handler, you will need the use pipes decorator. And then you will pass it a reference to your validation pipe. In order to generate a new pipe, run the following command. This command will generate a new pipe named name validation inside the pipes folder inside our crypto API module folder. So this file. Inside this file, we will implement a validation logic to check the length of the value pass to the route handler. Here the value will correspond to the name parameter when we call the find one route handler. We will check that the length of the name is superior to 2. Then we will return the value unchanged. Otherwise we will throw a bad request exception with the following message. So now start your server. Back into Postman, let's make a GET request to the crypto API slash find endpoint. Then we will enter a name for our cryptocurrency that is less than two characters. You can see that we receive our exception message. This message corresponds to the bad request exception that we define into our name validation. Now let's implement a transform pipe. Go inside your middleware folder and modify the identify middleware. Remove the logic to add an ID to the object request. Then add a is of property to the object request and set it to true. Then, inside the crypto API module, remove the call to the exclude method. Now, generate a new pipe by entering the following command. This command will generate the identify pipe. This pipe is a transform pipe, not a validation pipe like the previous. That is that the value will be modified when passing through this pipe. Here we just add underscore ID property with a generated unique ID. Then we return the value. Then above the add run route handler, add the use pipe decorated with a reference to the identify pipe. Then start your server. Back into Postman, make a post request to add a new cryptocurrency on the crypto API slash add crypto. Don't forget the JSON payload. You can see that the new cryptocurrency is added with the underscore ID property. So our transform pipe is working. Now let's talk about guards. 
Guards are classes annotated with the injectable decorator and implemented the can activate interface. Guards determine if a request will be handled. They are executed after each middleware but before any interceptor or pipe. To know more about interceptors, go to Nest documentation. Guards have access to the execution context, for example, what route handler will be called later, whereas middleware do not have access to such information. Guards are used for authorization. Here's a representation of guards in the request lifecycle. You can get more information about guards by going to this link. In order to use guards, you will need the use guards decorator with a reference to your guard. Guards can be tied to the controller, that is that the guard will apply to all route handlers inside the controller or can be tied to a specific route handler. Now let's generate a guard. In order to generate a guard, run the following command. This command will generate a new guard name auth inside the guards folder inside the crypto API module folder. Here we will name it my auth to distinguish it for auth guard which we will talk in a later video about. Inside the my of guard, we will need to implement the can activate method because the class implements the can activate interface. This method takes a context as an argument. Basically, it is an execution context which inherits from the arguments host. This provides details about the current execution process. So we will access the request and then we will validate the request. Here we use a help method to return the is of property on the request. Remember that we modified the identify middleware which add a is of property on the request object. So here, because the is of property is set to true, the can activate method will return true, hence will allow access to the route handler. Otherwise, it would throw an authorized exception. Back into Postman, Let's see an example by making a GET request crypto API. Of course, don't forget to start your server. So here you can see that we have access. So if we modify our identify middleware and set the is of property to false, you can see that we no longer have access and receive a forbidden resource exception message. Here's the order of execution of the request before reaching the route handler. So the request goes through the middlewares, then the guards, then the interceptors, then the pipes, the interceptors again, and exception filters if an exception is caught.